Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack in British Columbia. Uh, exciting day today. As you would have seen, we have finished off the oat harvest that we had started last time in the live stream. Uh, we're just getting the last of the bales here loaded into the shed and we'll go and have a look in just a second at exactly how many bales. But we have got more developments, more improvements coming through for the farm um, and we'll go through those in just a little bit. But let's go and have a look here. 297 bales. I think I guess 300. And uh, we're not too far off, are we? Look at that. That looks pretty impressive, actually, seeing it pretty much half full. In fact, over half full, 560 capacity. So let's see. It'd be great to be able to do the same thing here with the hay uh, as well. But we'll have to wait and see whether we can achieve that or not. But like I said, lots of exciting developments. You can see our money has gone up. And we have received some payments for the uh, equipment we have for sale. And we'll just pop around in just a minute. Uh, we'll get this parked up and go and have a look. All right, we'll just squeeze through here between the truck and the shed. We can fit just, and we've got a lot of equipment all lined up out here that needs to be washed fresh out of the oat fields and needing a good clean because obviously we don't need the combine or the header or the baler. Well, we'll actually need the baler hopefully for some hay, but the combine and header are all done again for a season, so we'll be going and getting those put away. But what you'll see, we've got a truck here all loaded up with one of the feed mixes. TGM Farming has offered us $42,000 for the brand new or effectively brand new unused mixer so that is on the way off up to his farm I'm not sure exactly what part of the country or he's farming on or whether it's heading south across the border into the states but that is all on the way to TJ which is fantastic now you'll see as well in the back here both the forage boxes have gone and we had a couple of offers on those Steve came in with an offer of 25 cents for the both of them uh, he just wanted them for the scrape value and wanted to make sure no one had the displeasure of using those again a valent effort Steve valent offer but uh, we actually had an even better offer come through Hoonigan Farmer offered me $80,000 for both the forage boxes so that was too good a deal to turn down. I don't know how much of a Hoonigan he is and what he exactly has his intents there for using those. But uh, thank you very much for that Hoonigan farmer. Looking forward to seeing those on your farm and they are on their way down to you now. So hope you enjoy those. As for the other bits of equipment, we do still have the uh, slightly used feed mixer there. If it's of any interest, it's actually got 7,000 litres of uh, TMR in there too. So that could be a bit of a sweetener for the deal. Not sure how good it'll be once it's shipped so you better get in quick and we've also got the uh, header here for the forage harvester the dealer has said they'll take that off me at a heavily reduced price so we do have a buyer for it but uh, i'd prefer to see it go to someone who is going to use it and get a good deal from me rather than it going to the dealer and probably getting marked up again and paying more for it so if you do need one give us a yell it is still there and i'm dearly keen love to get rid of it so that is the equipment we have sold which Gives us a little bit extra money, 350 grand as you can see up there in the top corner. So we've had the payment come in for the forage boxes and the feed mixer. One other thing I haven't done yet and we do need to do, we're going to sell that piece of land over on the far side where we took the cattle out of last time. So we'll just jump into the map and we will go and get rid of that right now. So there we go, lot 153, $204,000 we're going to sell that. And that is going to go straight into our coffers. So there we go, $557,000, which is fantastic. Now with all this money, we've got some things to spend it on, including paying down our debt. Don't worry, I have not forgotten about that. But tractor and feed mixer were the two priorities. And I had quite a few offers of tractors come through, which is very nice to see. Farm some guy had a long wheelbase New Holland T7, 270 horsepower. That's down on uh, in the upper Mississippi River Valley. He's been using that for feeding cattle as well. 169,000 new with about 12 months on it. Uh, so he had that. I needed to make an offer to him. Um, who else do we have? Alex Mills came through with a couple of John Deere's. Both less than 15 hours, but they were only 220 horsepower. So I don't think they were quite going to cut it for this big feed mixer that we have coming through to us very soon. Uh, technically, F1 has an old 8R, about 300 horsepower, 2008 model running wide spaced row crop tyres on the market for $96,000 because she needs a good wash and a roof replacement well. I'm all right with the washing part of it. Not sure about the roof replacement. Uh, Miles Brush had a trade on a Case Pro 306 horsepower, 40 hours out of Michigan. Black in color. Can be fully repaired, repainted, and shipped for me. And Scott Freefall came through with a Challenger Yellow Voltra, about 300 horsepower, down in Middles, uh, Middleburg, Pennsylvania. He'd transport it to Canada, but I'd have to pay the customs and name a price if we're interested, and we'd talk some more. So all of those sounded really attractive, um, but the idea of having to ship something up here from the States just seemed a little bit off. But we had someone who's in Edgewater, not too far down the road in Saskatchewan from us, and uh, they had a John Deere ready to go. 
So John Bewley, an 84.10, 15 and a half hours, already in Canada and Edgewater, a perfect mixer trailer. He's upgraded to a 7R and he was offering us that for $45,000. So at that price and uh, that power, it was too good an option not to turn down as a dedicated mixing tractor. So uh, that is already at that dealer. We're going to go and pick that up very, very soon uh, once we've sorted out all the equipment here. So lots going on. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to race over here because we've got one more development. And if you caught the live stream, you would have seen it. We are putting in a new uh, cow pen, cow barn. We've got a free stall coming in here that will hold 1,000 head of cows. So we're going even further to consolidate our business here and bring everything here into one site and uh, just simplify it as much as we can. Save a lot of the running around that we've been doing. So looking forward to getting that built. We've obviously got the pad down, got some uh, metal in here and getting everything all leveled out. So hopefully that will be built in the not too distant future. So in terms of other developments, we are going to buy some more land. Field 141, or it's field 149, farmland 141 down the back here, $168,000. So that is going to be our first purchase to replace some of the farmland that we've lost. So we're going to get that bought. And we've already paid for the tractor and feed mixer, which are down at the dealer. So we'll go and pick those up. So that still leaves us $380,000. We're going to need a little bit of money here for the free stall to get that built. And uh, also, if we want to buy some more cattle, we don't have to just yet. Uh, so the rest of that money will probably go down on paying off some of our debt. We've got the oats in the bin. We've got some milk to sell. So everything's looking pretty rosy for us here on the cattle farmer. We're looking forward to a bit more progress. So deal now. We're going to go and wash some equipment. We're going to get this truck off and on the way to TJM, TJM Farming. And uh, then we're going to actually get these animals fed because I've been sitting here very patiently since they were delivered and they haven't had too much to eat. I've settled in. They're looking nice and comfortable now there in the feedlot, so we need to get them working, get them fattening up and uh, making us some money. So we'll go get this all sorted out and we'll get down to it. Once everything else has been put away, just the combine here to go and we're going to go tuck this here into the shed next to the swather there. Of course we are going to need that swather out in a little while when we have the grass all ready to mow, but there we go. And that's probably going to be, let's we'll see as far as we can get in. Forage harvest will be coming out very soon as well because we're going to have all the uh, silage over the road to do, all the maize silage, corn silage, there we go. And that's a pretty good deal, really should give that a wash, but uh, that'll get a good clean down once we're finished with it. Then it will look nice and shiny then like the new Holland does. Right, let's head on down. We're going to get one of our staff to take us down in the pickup. We'll head on down and go and get this new feed wagon picked up. Well, there they go. They're going a different way back to the yard by the looks of things. Going out that way, but that's fine. They'll find their way there. But there they go. And here we are with our uh, new-to-us tractor, John Deere 8410 and a uh, big bigger mega mammoth feed wagon 64,000 litre capacity 64 cubic meters of food able to be mixed up in this beast so this is a pretty impressive looking piece of kit and this is going to be a fantastic asset to us to help us get all our animals fed now this has got more capacity in it than the truck and trailer combo we're running at the moment and of course is a whole lot easier to use because it's just one so we can just fill and make the mix up in one rather than having to switch between the two mixes that we're using at the moment on the back of the truck so looking forward to getting this all up and running so let's jump in make our way back to the farm and we will get started on getting some food mixed up for the animals you have to excuse the beeping but i thought we'd just take a look here at the interior of the tractor very well looked after john did a great job uh detailing this before it came up to us it has been up here and delivered a we've had the dealer go over it and given it the once over changed all the oil filters uh, hydraulic filters redone all the fluids and everything like that so we should be all good to go for quite some time like i said it is just going to be a feed tractor we're not going to be using it for any tillage or planting or anything at least not at this stage we shouldn't need to with the tractors we already have but uh yeah nice tidy looking bit of kit and uh that feed mixer on the back there massive but anyhow let us get back down to the yard and we will go and have a play with it looking forward to seeing what it can do so safely back here at the yard with the mixer we're just going to come straight around here now our first option or first input is going to have to be our maize silage there so we are just going to have to get our truck out of the way because uh, we do want to mix it up here with the new mixer see how that all works um but still interested to see whether we'll keep this or whether we're able to set things up and just run with the one mixer by the time we've got all of the animals back down here, get the free stall built and we'll bring all the dairy cattle back down here as well as the beef cattle, there may not be a necessity to have this rig running around. Uh, if I recall correctly, I do have this on a lease to own purchase option at the moment, so we could always return it to the dealer 
and cut our losses with it but uh, we'll get it out of the way and we will go and get things set up here in the other mixer we just brought up our mixing uh, recipe there for what we're going to do. We've got the set to young stock. Of course, all of these animals in here are relatively young. I think we bought them at uh, 10 or 12 months old. So we're just going to try that at the moment. I was having a look at the beef cattle mix. Uh, that requires clover silage or uh, clover hay or alfalfa hay. Of course, our clover is still growing and our alfalfa field we've just sold. And we did have the issues with the alfalfa. Now, I am playing on the updated version of Chilliwack. This was updated about uh, the beginning of April. And I understand that Chumpy Farmer has made all the field types compatible with Maze Plus now. So the alfalfa hay will be alfalfa hay rather than alfalfa winrow, which is what it was when we were last using it. So it might be an option to consider that. Of course, it would mean we do have to plant some alfalfa somewhere, but uh, that's not an issue. We've got some land to do that on. We could even look at doing it down on the back of this grass field where we've just purchased that new one. So we'll have to have a look at that in a little bit. We need to get some precision farming data and everything like that put in there as well. Let's just head on over here because we do need to start getting some maize silage in here. We're just going to have another look at our mix and just make sure we're getting everything correct. So you can see down there 15% minimum of either grass or maize silage and 25% minimum of hay, 10% minimum of straw. So no shortage of straw at the moment. Uh, hay, a little bit of an issue. So 10% of course is going to be 6,500 or 6 litres. So 25% hay is going to actually require us about 15,000 litres, a little bit more than that, so it might pay to have a look and see if we do actually have enough hay. We do still have some of this here, this is uh, alfalfa hay, of course, 4,500 litre bales, there's two, four, six, seven of those there, we just come over and have a look here as well, we do have eight hay bales in there, so we do still do have some that we can make that, so I think we'll be right to make at least one mix, and we can take that round and give each of the uh, feedlots just a little bit not even sure how much it's going to take. 64,000 litres might go some way. But anyhow, let's get some maize silage put up here into the uh, into the back. So there we go. All are running as it should. 15% required of silage, which is about 10,000 litres. So we'll let this get up to about that. Uh, then we might look at putting a grass bale in a little bit later. We've got some silage there. But let's get 10,000 litres get the 15% in here for that. We do have to decide what we're going to top it up with. Because of course those are just the minimums. The mixture quantities we've just called out, 25, 10 and 15, doesn't actually make us up to 100% mix. So we will have to put some extras in there, but we'll have to make sure we do keep the minimum. So there we go, that is the minimum of our silage. We'll just carry on there. I'm basically going to try and make a minimum mixture, and then we'll see what we have to adjust for everything else. So there we go, that is, uh, that is that there. So let's drive down here, and we will get a couple of bales spawned out, and put them into the mixer here with the wheel loader. So four hay bales, two straw bales, the hay bales are four and a half thousand litres, there's 18,000 there, and the straw bales are 5,000 litres, so we've got 10,000 litres there. So we'll get those put up into the mixer and see how our mixing ratio looks like once we've done that. First time we've been able to use the case here with uh, bales as well, other than in the field, so hopefully we'll be able to get this working pretty well. I'm going to try and get this bale off the top and uh, put that down on the one next to it, and then we should be able to pick up all four at once which make things a lot easier and a lot quicker than uh, what we were doing having to use the grab there on the uh, Kubota with the front loader. So let's just see if we can go and get these all speared in exactly the right spot. Perfect. That is going to really speed up the rate at which we can make our feed mixture by being able to use and pick up that many bales all at once. Get these lifted up. A little bit of concern there, are we going to have height to get up and across? We do. I was a little bit nervous that it might not quite fit. Oh. There we go. Pull those back out and they should get chewed down into our mix. Let's change texture there. What are we showing? Silage and hay. So we are still looking good. So that should be a correct mixture. I'm just looking at the ratios there. 38% silage and 61% hay still sits in the correct ratios. And we'll throw some straw in there now as well. I'll get these straw bales up in here as well and see how our ratio looks once we've got that in there. Hopefully that was not going to tip over the edge. No, there we go. And that just turned a nice shade of brown. In fact, it did tip over the edge. It's come out the front. But let's have a look. 39,000 litres and we do have a TMR for young stock in there. Now, of course, it wasn't showing up correctly because we hadn't put the straw in. And uh, it has actually detected that. That straw bale 
it's only 360 litres so it's kind of falling out but it had used most of it so we'll get that picked up and put in there as well or else that's going to cause us all sorts of problems but uh, that's working out pretty well we're just going to have to work on our mixture and uh, figure out exactly what we need to add in now probably pretty much doubling that a little bit more of everything one more straw bale will definitely probably be enough and then we'll just balance it out with a mix of silage and hay so that's two more hay get those two off let them drop in there and one more straw bale and we'll just have a look at our ratio once we've got that off hopefully we can get it off the fork and there we go everything's still good ratio wise we can just bump up our silage now to top it up which is another 11,000 litres or so so I think a couple of these grass bales and that'll get us close enough to being pretty much 100% full we don't have to get it perfect every time but we'll just uh, pick these two up here they look like a couple of prime candidates for getting thrown in here in fact they're only 3,000 litres each aren't they so we do probably actually need to take three of them so let's see if we can grab this one here as well there we go that'll be 9,000 litres of silage total i was thinking they were closer to 4,000. we've dropped one that's all right we'll get that picked up put that 9,000 litres of silage in there and we'll be pretty much good to go and there we go 62,000 litres there or thereabouts so we're not too far off being uh having a perfect mix and everything is about the right quantity we certainly can't put four straw bales in that would take us to 20,000 litres and i think uh 30 percent of 64,000 is less than 20,000 so it is limited to three straw bales so that can be our filler then we can mix up the rest between the hay and silage and in fact we probably should have gone the other way and used a little bit more silage because uh when you look around still got some corn silage but we've got a million or so litres of silage sitting over there in bunkers so for now that might have been the better option but anyhow let's hop up in here and we will go and see if we can find some triggers here to get these animals fed certainly no issue pulling this, this tra tractor has more than enough grunt to pull this fully loaded now i am going to try and set up an auto drive course for this but uh this is just a little bit of exploration to see if we can go and find the triggers i'm just going to check which tip side we have open we are we can get onto the right menu there there you go we are on right side flick between left and right so we'll run down this side here with the angus and we will go and see how we can do with getting these ones fed so hopefully here we go we found a trigger already there so we'll get that turned on in fact we've got triggers all the way along the back so we have a little bit put in there because I do want to try and do this with auto drive. So there's one trigger. If we drive along, we should find another one about halfway along. There it was there. In fact, we've driven through it already. I've still been in the first trigger because there we are. We're getting a trigger the whole way along here for those ones. And then we should get into the third pin here and find a trigger for that as well. There it is. right that works pretty perfect now the question is going to be is can we get turned around in the end here without going into the field and get lined up again for the other side and it looks like the answer is going to be only just because we do need to be on the right hand side again so that's all right but we do get that trigger along there so it may be a case of actually feeding in from the other end first Try and figure out the best way to do that but we have managed to go fast enough and find all three triggers all at once as we've gone along not quite the last one there we go right let's have a go now that we've got that all sorted out let's see if we can set this up on some auto drive so we've got a auto drive course set up there we've got feedlot 1c 1b and 1a and feedlot 2a 2b and 2c so i've numbered the feedlots and i've actually named them as well using the uh, rename option for your placeables uh, so row one here in front of us where all the Anguses are, row two at the back are the limousines and then we've got the ABC starting down at the loading ramp end for both rows. So because we're going to head around from this direction, feedlot 1C will be the first one that gets fed. So if we just have a look on our left here, it's a little bit out of order because uh, this will set it by alphabetical order. Uh, but hopefully it does detect the first one that it gets to and uh, just fills that. But I am a little bit worried by how much food that these feedlots might have. It might be a whole lot more than what we're used to. Because if you look here, we have delivered 1,500 litres into these limousines. There's only 16 of them in the pen, and uh, the capacity has not gone up very far at all. So we could be in for quite a bit of an effort trying to get these all fed. 
or keeping them fed or keeping their uh, feed full as you can see there the one we've probably got the most in the 7000 liters the capacity does not move much at all so uh that could be auto drive won't work on that regard because if we just left it to go to 1c it would fill this one up before it even moves on to any of the others so the uh cycle delivery option might not be the most efficient one here it might just be a case of sending a full feed wagon to each lot uh one at a time but that's all right that's six trips we can handle that one anyhow let's press play and see exactly what happens here gonna go to the harvest or load first but we'll trick it into going to the feed lots and let's see what happens so hopefully i've got the turning and everything done correctly this end shouldn't be too much of a problem you can see everything coming in and turning the only thing i haven't done which i think will be a bit of an issue is we have not powered up the feed mixer so it is probably just going to get here and not deliver it but we will wait and see if we need to we'll just stop things and intervene and there we go no it's not detected a trigger so we'll turn that off we will power up the mixer and press play again and see what happens now it's driving straight past these triggers because it hasn't detected them it's not close enough yet it is heading to harvest store 1a which is a little bit unfortunate we might have to go through and renumber the feedlot triggers so that a is the first one we get to rather than trying to keep it alphabetical unless there's an option to not have it alphabetical and of course it did skip straight past it because we restarted the course and it wants to go to the harvest stores which if we just have a look there I did branch off so it didn't have to go through the whole course if it was empty so that's all right we can just uh, tell this once it gets around here onto a straight little piece Let's carry on and head off to the feedlot go and see if you can try to feed some of the animals so we go ahead to move the uh, loader out of the way something else to consider is making sure we keep that track all clear and that path clear for the feed wagon but let's have a look I think it's currently heading to 1b if we have a look there yes it is which is the middle of the th three feed lots but depending on our trigger distance it may even detect the trigger here at 1c before it gets too far along let's have a look and there it has so it's detected that feed lot trigger and it's probably going to go and proceed to dump all of the food here into 1c i could probably have set it up with just the one pass along each side if we set our triggers to a long distance maybe 100 meters maybe even longer than that we probably could have put just the single trigger at the end and then it would have filled these up as we go but i think from what we're looking at here and how long it's going to take to fill this trough up and how high it's going to become we are actually having, going to have to individually assign the feed mixer to each of the uh each of the cattle pens and then we are looking at 1c which is getting filled up at the moment 35,000 liters and it is only just tickling the surface of it so really is going to take us quite a while if we were to fully feed these animals of course the pens are designed for a thousand head of animal each so you can understand why it would have quite a decent amount of storage capacity so uh there we go that is just going to have to go and do its thing and uh, we'll get it filled up and feed make some more well there we go we've successfully made our first load of food and got it into the animals uh, i've been thinking i think the benefit of having the truck is going to outweigh getting rid of it because while this one is off uh, feeding the animals once we've made a mix in this and it's off feeding we could have the truck here and be making a load in that as well and that means we have to make three in each to give each of the pens at least one load and uh, we'll be able to manage that and observe how quickly these cattle get through it and uh, whether we need to make a load a day or what it's going to be um, but our next issue as I'm just looking here is the allocation of hay because of how much we put in there two four six seven bales here it's not going to go very far two bales so we've only got nine bales of hay left and i think we put six into that mix so we've actually technically only got enough for a little bit more of a mix so that is really going to be a bit of a concern uh, we might have to get into this field get this grass mode and convert it into hay a little bit sooner than i thought uh, i was hoping to wait for another growth stage and get that really nice tall grass before we were mowing it so uh we'll see we might just give that a little bit more consideration and try and decide what we're going to do so I think for now we're going to make up one more wagon load and we're going to go and allocate that 64,000 litres between the five other pens equally. I should give them about 12,000 litres or so each and that hopefully gives them enough food to tide them over for the next couple of days. If, uh, if it's looking like that and if we can manage that amount we'll uh, certainly be happy to be able to get that hay done in a little bit sooner or a little bit later once that grass has grown properly. I can't forget though we do have all our dairy cattle which also need food so uh we could even look at buying some hay while we've got some money we could get a couple of loads of hay delivered could be another option because hay 
it is looking like it's going to be our issue at the moment. I never thought that would be the case, but it uh, certainly is. Silage, we're going to be flush with silage very soon once we get the maize in. We're already looking pretty with that, so we might maximise as much silage as we can into our mix. And uh, we will use the rest and minimise the amount of hay, but let's get that in there. Just mindful again that maize silage is a necessity for our cow mix, but not so much a necessity here for these animals. So it might be better off using grass silage for these ones. Well, change of plans, we are on our way down to the store to go and buy a load of hay. I hadn't read the recipe correctly. Alfalfa hay was not accepted for the uh, young animal mix. It is only grass hay. So we're kind of hamstrung there. We only had the two hay bales left. So uh, our mix was never going to work with what we have. So unfortunately, we're on our way down. We're going to go buy some more hay. Could have been worse. We could have had no option. We could have had no money and not been able to do this. So fortunately, we are in a position to be able to go down and get this hay. So we'll get down there, get to the store, get back and get that load made up and uh, get it into the cows or into the cattle. Fortunately, the alfalfa hay can still be used for our cow mix. So uh, we can still have something here to feed the girls with. We're all looking very happy out there in the grass, might I add. All right, so we're down here at the shop. I was just doing a little bit of maths. We've got these square bales, which we obviously don't have a square baler, but there's nothing stopping us using these. 8,000 litres for uh, $1,490 versus the round ones, which are 4,500 litres for 980. So I think my maths tells me I'm right. I think it's more affordable. We get more value out of our square bales than we will out of our round bales. So we're going to load these up. The other benefit, I was looking at the trailer, we can load 36 of these on the trailer versus only 34 of the round bales. So we are going to get a lot more hay. Of course it's going to cost us more, but we're going to get a lot more hay buying uh, 36 of these than we do getting 34 round bales. So we'll get that, get it loaded up, and get back down to the farm. All right, happy days. 36 hay bales here. It cost us a fair bob. I'm not going to say how much. It's about $40,000, I think. Rewind the video and you'll be able to see how much money we had when we drove down there and how much we've got on our way out. But uh, worth it. It's going to be worth it to be able to get all our animals fed and keep them fed until we've got our own hay. And uh, square bales are going to be nice to handle. So let's get back to the yard and get all the cattle fed. Well, they fit in there quite nicely, even if I do say so myself. We've got one out here already somewhere behind us. There it is, 8,000 litre of bale. So we're going to be very judicious with our use of these, make the most of our silage and straw towards our feed mix. But if we just pop over here and have a look, uh, another 8,000 litres of hay in there is going to double that and hopefully will be enough to get us to the 25,000 litres minimum there for hay. So we'll keep an eye on it, but we'll get our food mix all finished off. There we are. I was pretty nervous actually putting the last three silage bales in just then, but the silage sitting at 49, maximum of 50, hay at 26, a minimum of 25. So we've got that pretty much spot on. So good to know those ratios. 31,000 litres of silage is about the most we can put in. 17,000 litres of hay and 15,000 litres of straw. So we'll keep that in our mind. But uh, next time, so we're going to go and just very quickly race around, go and put uh, 12,000 litres in each of the pens that haven't been fed properly yet, and uh, then we'll move on. I've got a little bit of milk to go and sell before the sun sets, and we do need to check on our dairy cows and see if they need any food as well. Again, I'm going to be careful with feeding them because uh, with the free store building coming in down here, we may not need to feed them as much down at their barns as they have been getting. But anyhow, let's just very quickly race through and get all of these cattle fed. The last lot of food here into the limousines and there we go, given that most of them actually got 13,000, the ones in the middle had 12, but that must have just about added up to our 64,000. I should have done the math properly, but uh, we're not too far off there with that. So we're just going to bring this back in here and park it up for now. And uh, we'll go and take a quick look at the animal screen and figure out what we need to do with any of the others. Whether we need to feed them anymore or uh, whether we're all good to go and get some milk salt. So they've all got at least 14,000 litres in, 14, 17, 16 there. 15 for those ones, 17, and then those in 1C who got a decent amount, 41,000 litres. Already see we're getting some slurry there too, which is good. We'll have to go and see that is going to transfer through to our slurry tank or whether we need to go in and add the triggers and make sure we're getting that 
close enough. Now, just having a look at our other cows, the brown swiss up the top there, they are looking happy. They've got lots of food down there where they came or were moved into. Uh, the Holston's in 125, they've got a little bit of food there, 15,000 litres, so we might have to go and top them up just a little bit. Uh, but the most worry here, the Holsteins in 203 are actually completely out, and uh, their productivity and health is dropping. So, have to urgently go and grab the truck. We will take a load of food down to them, and uh, then we'll also go and probably load up and take a load to the Holsteins as well. So we're going to get some more food mixed up, then we'll be able to go and get just a little bit of milk sold. If we have a look here, 114,000 litres of milk. It's almost two truckloads, and uh, you look at the price, 80 grand. It's not too bad. Pays for the hay. Well, while the truck's out, we decided we'd mix up a load here in the big mixer and take this to the cows just down the road. They were the other ones requiring some food, so we will get this down there and uh, make the most of it while the truck's out, instead of just hanging around and waiting for it to turn back up. So we'll get down there, get them fed, and uh, that should just about do it for us. I was going to try and get that milk delivered. We'll see how we go for time. And there we go, it works just as well in this shed as it does down in the feedlot. Perfect, this mix is absolutely fantastic. Really pleased we found this one and uh, really pleased with all the machinery we've sold, the income we've made and everything else. All the other big changes we've made to the farm, we've been able to afford it along with, uh, along with everything else we've done. So very, very happy with where things are heading at the moment. But we'll get this all unloaded. I'm not sure, I don't think they'll actually take it all. Should have a little bit left, which we could uh, always give to some of the cattle back down in the feedlot. And there we go, about 7,000 litres that they didn't quite take. So that can go down into the feedlot. We'll find a home for that, no problem. We've got some hungry mouths everywhere at the moment. So we'll get back down to the yard and go and get that unloaded down there. And uh, we'll see if the truck's back. It shouldn't be too far away. Look at that, just following the truck in the drive. Completely unplanned, did not realise it was actually that far or that close to coming in. Didn't even see it as we were driving along there. But there we are, it has... Obviously gone and done what it needed to do, get the animals fed, we'll just let it get out of the way a little bit further. Sneak past here and go and drop the rest of this food off into one of the animal troughs here. Well there we are, I think that is going to be a good place to wrap this episode up. I'm very happy with uh, where we've got to in the series actually. Some new equipment, some new feedlots and uh, even some more development over there with the free stall building coming in. Looking forward actually to getting everything brought down here into one spot I think it's just going to simplify our lives a little bit it was fun running around between the different parts of the map but uh, I think having a bit more of a centralized operation as we're growing is going to be a much better option now I do know we've got some more debt to pay down which we will do I am going to go and deliver some milk because if we just have a look in the animal uh, tab you can see there the Holsteins they're almost full and I think if we have a look at the other ones as well they are full, uh, so we need to go and get that emptied out or we're going to have no more capacity for milk. But I'm going to do that after we've finished recording, do that off stream or off camera and uh, you'll catch up with that next time you're in. See how much money we've made off that milk and uh, we will get that done. But we will be moving into the next day of August in the next episode. Uh, so we will be back again, probably getting over into the maize over the road, over into the corn and getting some of that harvested. Which does remind me we do still need to buy the new forage boxes to be able to get that all up and running so that is another cost that is coming to us but uh, again that milk which will be sold will probably go some way towards financing all of those new purchases now the other thing to think about as well is if we were to go and sell some of this land field down here 203 195 uh, and possibly the one up the top here where would we go to expand the farm a little bit further? Be open to suggestions. One of the logical purchases here would be field 132. It's an extension of what we own here over the road. Or coming down the other way here with uh, 137 or 136. 145 would just be a bit of a dream, I think, of ever affording that $967,000. So uh, I think we'd just park that one for now and not even give that any consideration. But certainly some options around us here. Uh, I'm leaning towards 132 up here i think that could be one of the better options for us but uh something to consider i am almost keen with the map update to actually keep hold of this bit of land and give the clover a chance we just have a look here at the growth schedules you'll see the clover growth schedule has actually changed considerably so we might find with the map update that we might actually be able to get some of that cut and harvested before november uh, before winter arrives so perhaps we'll hang on to that land for the foreseeable future not make any hasty decisions or anything like that and as we start talking the rain is starting to fall out of that cloudless sky which is very interesting but that's the breaks anyhow i'm going to wrap things up there thank you all very much for watching hope you've enjoyed that episode we'll catch you in the next one mm -hmm.